Well, Ryan, man, it's great to have you back on the show. I'm always excited when I have a great excuse to be able to talk to you, namely new music and, of course, the new album, Outlive. Welcome back to the show, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So the album is out now. I've been listening to it today and thoroughly enjoying it. It's definitely, as one might expect from a Demon Hunter record, it's different, but yet it still has that kind of signature Demon Hunter sound somehow, which always amazes me that you guys are able to do that. But tell us an overview of Outlive and what people can expect from this new record. Yeah, well, this, you know, this is our first album in about three years, which is actually, for a band like us that doesn't necessarily hit the road all the time, we do like to do albums as frequently as we can. So this is actually the longest stretch that we've had between albums. A lot of life happened between our last album, Extremist, and this one. Namely, a lot of kids have been brought into the family, the Demon Hunter family, as it were. Between Extremist and this, we went from zero kids between the five of us to seven kids. Oh my so goodness. Kind of the, yeah. <laughs> so just like an eruption of children. <laughs> so that was obviously that forced us to shift things around a little bit and kind of navigate some, some new waters, obviously. So the process was a little bit different, but I think that what came from that was kind of a, a refreshed sense of, of what we wanted to do and just, you know, a fresh take on what we already were. And so with that said, Patrick, actually, our guitar player, Patrick, really helped push this album forward by doing a lot of the writing. Um, that was kind of a first for us. I've, I've usually handled all the writing with the exception of some of the lead guitar stuff myself. Yeah. Um, and this time it was just there was no bones about it. I just kind of needed the help. I'm really glad that I kind of opened those doors up. He wrote uh, he ended up writing five songs on the record. And so those already just from what I can tell are kind of fan favorites. So. Nice. In terms of, you know, just the, the major changes or, or whatever changes that I think kind of come through on the record, I think those are the most obvious. His songs tend to be a little bit more technical, mm -hmm. kind of uh, capitalizing on that, that more detailed middle aspect where mine are kind of more stripped down, scaled down to, to like bare bones. So you kind of get a, a good breadth of styles. Nice. Very cool. Well, with that being said, I mean, you guys have put out uh, a good number of records now. I mean, you know, you've done a live record. You guys have done special editions. And I mean, you've put out a lot uh, over the years. How do you think that this fits in in the overall catalog of Demon Hunter at this point? Like, what is its place, do you think? Well, I, I like to think of the albums actually in pairs. Okay. It's... Um... I think that that's, that's what we've been saying now for a number of records, and it seems to kind of ring true the longer that we do it. And so if you look at the first two records and then the third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and then seventh and eighth as, as pairs, it's actually the easiest way to follow that is by who mixed the record. So uh -huh. the first two were mixed by J.R. McNeely, the second two by Machine. So we've had basically a different person mix the records. And it almost seems like going from, say, album four into album five, we made a pretty huge stride both musically and, and just kind of the dynamics of the band. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly why the formula is what it is, but I feel like there's something about that timetable, that period where we feel the need to maybe tweak things a little bit. And then from that record to the next one, we're kind of refining those things, refining those tweaks and kind of getting it perfect. And then yeah. by the time we're comfortable with that, it's like we're jumping into something new. With that said, you know, I've always seen this as basically the second the second part of what extremists started. Oh, okay. um, so both of these records have Jeremiah, uh, our uh, guitar player, Jeremiah Scott, he's produced both of these um, extremists and Outlive. And so there's a certain element of his fingerprint on these as well, which gives them kind of, I think, their own vibe amongst the catalog. And then just the way that we're, the way that we do each of these records is just kind of, that's how it's always kind of ended up. So okay. with that said, it's hard to, it's hard to put it in order. Um, in terms of my personal favorites, you know, I have, there's a nostalgia that comes with the old stuff. Um, but then again, that seems like kind of a lifetime away. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not the, the kind of person who likes to look back and, and kind of dwell on yesteryear as, it, as it's the heyday or anything like that. With that said, I think that our, our newest material is, is our best. Um, and I know that's a typical thing to say as a <laughs> as a guy in a band. You but that's the way it should be, though. I mean, you know, I think that if you think that your best years are behind you, then that means it's time yeah. to quit. You know, I mean, if you think sure. you can't yeah. ever recapture something, then, I mean, the bands that I've seen that, that always reference like, oh, well, we're trying to do this record again, it never seems to work. Even if that's what fans want, it never seems to work. Right, right. And so we're just, you know, 
honestly, by the time a, a record comes out, my mind is already, you know, knee deep in the next, whatever the next one's going to be. Um, so, it, you know, it, like this record, it seems like it's been finished for a long time and just, you know, people are just now hearing it. Yeah. But honestly, I've been, I've been working on songs for the next record. Um, and so has Patrick, uh, pretty thoroughly already. And so we're always kind of thinking ahead, nice. ahead and that's, that just makes it easier also just with our schedules and everything. We just have to, any chance we get to start thinking about the future, we're doing it. Fantastic. Well, with that being said, let's just forget Outlive. Let's talk about the next record. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. That would be mean. That would be mean. Although I'm sure somewhat gratifying at the same time, but I just, I had to get that out there. Oh man, it was just sitting there. I'm like, oh, I have to say it. Oh man. (laughs) I love that pregnant pause there too. That was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was like, well, maybe I could. But, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Well, now, um, and this is something that I realized I'd never asked you before. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I've ever asked anybody this before, but um, this might be especially interesting considering the fact that Patrick wrote five of the songs on the record. But looking at it now, it's done. It's been done for a while for you guys. But what lyrically would you say is the song you're most proud of on the record? And then what musically would you say is the song that you're most proud of? Um, well, it's easier for me to brag on Patrick. Um, and truthfully, his songs are, are really did become my favorites on the record. So musically, I really love the song called the end that mm-hmm. I really love that he did. Um, cold blood seems to be a, a real fan favorite, which is also a Patrick track. Nice. And so those for me, they're, it's just fun to write to something else, uh, something that someone else did. I scrutinize my own stuff quite a bit. So it's, yeah. It's actually a lot of fun to kind of take my hands off of the, the musical aspect and just focus on the, the melodies and the lyrics. So those were a lot of fun to, to, to write to. Same with Died in My Sleep. Those were all just, he, he writes great open, you know, these big open sections that'll really allow me the space to kind of run with in terms of melody and things like that. So those, those would be my favorites. In terms of lyrics, the closest thing to a ballad that we have on this record, which is um, I like to say that this record has more singing than a normal Damon Hunter record, but um, yeah. less typical balladry. Right. Yeah. Um, so we usually have like two, you know two if not three really slow songs. And the slowest thing we have on this one um, is One Step Behind, and uh, it's still got very heavy guitars and things like that. So it's a little bit different for us in that regard. But those lyrics that I wrote while my wife was pregnant, and we were expecting our first, and so that one's definitely about entering venturing into that the the new waters of fatherhood and just kind of what it means to bring a child into the world in this day and age and all those kind of things so that one's probably the most near and dear to me and it definitely treads new territory obviously okay fantastic well that's awesome dude that's awesome i'm glad to know that because that makes me i always wonder that after the fact i'm like man i should have asked about that so i'm glad that i did this time the first time for everything remembering to ask a good question oh man so with with kids being part of the picture now what does it look like with uh the already kind of narrow scope for touring for demon hunter at this point yeah um I'd say the jury's kind of still out on it. We're we're kind of feeling that, feeling out those waters as we go. Um, mm-hmm. This year we have a, a small handful of dates already on the schedule, but not many. Um, and we will be filling in a few more dates this year, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, we're taking it slow. Uh, everyone, you know, even with kids aside, everyone has a lot going on. I my full time thing is an art director at an ad agency. So I mean, it's it's a uh, quite a demanding role and. Uh, our bass player, John, works there with me as a producer. Jeremiah's jumping between uh, production and live production and building his own house and all kinds of other things. So, yeah, it's quite a task to get us all together. And that says nothing of the fact that we live in separate states, which is a whole other, <laughs> a whole other beast. Right. So um, we don't know yet. It's, it's hard to say. It's sometimes for us it's been you know we go year to year and sometimes we end up touring more than we thought we were going to sometimes it ends up being a little less but i wish i could give you a solid answer on it but uh, we're still kind of figuring out what that's going to look like yeah and that makes sense man that makes sense i mean um you know my 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 day job before i had my first kid which hasn't been that long ago took me out on the road a good bit and then uh once you know the little one came i'm like you know I, it, it became pretty obvious we were about to move to nashville so that wasn't going to be the job for me anyway but i could have transitioned that job here if i wanted but i was like you know i don't 
I don't necessarily want to be gone like for a week at a time. Right. And you know that right. you know, I don't want to miss that big a chunks of of my little girl's life. And so I totally understand. I mean, it's it's a beast having to to mess with touring. I'm sure just on a having a normal job in general, but you add the kids in there, and then that's a whole other element that makes right. it difficult for sure. I think it'll be it'll be smaller chunks for us for sure. Um, you know, I don't foresee any any you know, long weeks on end kind of continuous stuff. Not that that was really something that we did a lot before, but even more so now, I think it'll be like two, three days here and there kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, lest I forget, let's talk about, of course, the single, which is Cold Winter Sun and and kind of what went into that song. Yeah, that's actually another one of Patrick's as well. Um, So he he basically sent me about 20 demos for this record and kind of just threw them out there and he had no expectations or anything like that, but I really clung to a, a number of them and made a short list of the ones that, you know, I vibed with the most or I felt like I could really do the most justice to. And that one really stuck out to me just because I really love that groove riff that, that, that starts the song. And uh, I had some lyrics kind of in the realm of what ended up being being in there for the chorus. I knew that I that the concept of what the sun is in the winter and the fact that the sun can be shining through the clouds in a way that basically everything is shadow right? Um, or, or nothing is, you know, um, and just kind of the analogy that that created for the world as it is now. It's kind of like when, when you're not able to see exactly where the shadow is coming from, it's, it's kind of harder to understand. <laughs> Drawing an analogy between that and, and people and, and just the uh, kind of the chaos that, that the world's undergoing right now, mm-hmm. um, like everything is in shadow. It's almost hard to like make out the light. So the idea that uh, that the world is in kind of a cold winter phase is kind of where that, that whole concept came from. Okay, nice. Very cool, very cool. And then the other thing I want to ask you about that's kind of tied to something that you guys have put out as kind of an official offering uh, tied to a specific song with this record is you guys put out a video for Died in My Sleep, which I believe, I, I guess I read an interview with you about kind of the, the general idea of the concept of that video, and, uh, which I thought was really interesting. And I wonder if you could elaborate on that for us. Yeah, that video was actually created, directed, and filmed by uh, the company I work for called Belief Agency. Um, they actually did the last one alive on the extremist record as well. Okay. But um, so I'm, I'm kind of able to play a heavy hand in, in helping art direct those. And the concept was really what I like to do for the first first song or the first single or video from each record is kind of reestablish the band. So I usually like to do a performance video mm-hmm. so that people can actually see the guys in the band and watch them play the song to some extent. Um, I like to save some of the more conceptual artistic stuff for other songs mm-hmm. um, a little bit later on in the, in the schedule. I just think with each record, it's kind of a good, good time to kind of reestablish the look and feel of the band uh, with that first video. It's about how can we do a performance video that's a little different than something that we've done before. Usually we kind of focus on these really dark, moody, kind of uh, desaturated tones. And this one was, it was almost like a video that was just like a color study. We took a lot of inspiration from some of the really bright tones that, that kind of saturated the grunge scene in the 90s. If you look at like Alice in Chains' um, Baseless album cover, or Nirvana's Heart Shape Box music video, they have these really kind of hyper colors. And that's really kind of where the inspiration came for that. And it was about what kind of interesting stuff can we do in that world. And so we, we ended up projecting footage behind us and then footage on top of us and kind of seeing like just, just visually what we could do playing with those two kind of uh, layers. So it was more about just doing something kind of artistic, but, but focusing on the performance aspect. And in the end, you know, with the theme being sleep, make it almost kind of dream sequency, like everything's just a little bit off or a little bit too bright or, or too saturated to be real. Yeah. Well, and I enjoyed it. I, after reading that, I was like, okay, now I'm really curious to see this. And and you're right. You did hit on a note that is not often touched on these days. Cause it feels like, you know, it's like if you're making heavy music, you're going to have this kind of like weird emo kind of style video. That's like all kind of broody and, and everything. And it always seems like borderline depressing somehow, even if it's not a depressing song, just because it's trying to capture a mood. But um, I think that you guys captured a mood, but it wasn't the same kind. And it was very interesting and visually fun to watch in a way that most videos now are not, especially for cool. a performance video. So I think you guys hit the nail on the head on that one. That was, that's a great video. Thanks. 
Yeah, for sure. Now, um, since you since you've been around as not only uh, you know the lead singer of Demon Hunter, but of course you also have uh, your project Knives, and you work uh, you know as you said as an art director at, at an ad agency and all that. What do you think, looking back on all the time that you spent doing these various artistic things, what do you feel like is the biggest challenge that you have at this point that that you either want to do or that you see coming? Uh, that's a good question. The biggest challenge for me currently is is has everything to do with time. Just the the older I get, the more responsibilities that I acquire. It's just finding finding the time to really put the full amount of effort that I want into whatever I'm doing, whether it's Demon Hunter or Knives or whatever. Um, I really need a certain amount of time in order to really focus what I see as ample time for those for those things. So it definitely takes a little bit more finesse these days than it used to. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's definitely a, a moderate difficulty. Good problem to have, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely in there in terms of overall band stuff. You know, we've had, we've had a pretty good run. It's, we haven't really worn ourselves out on the road. Uh, like I said, we do, we live in different States, but so we don't have a lot of the complications that a lot of other bands have where they're kind of in each other's faces all the time. Like these guys are my best friends. And so when, it, when we get together and hang out, it's like all good times. That's cool. um, so there's really rarely any drama in that regard. You know, we pick this thing up and we drop it when we, when we feel like it. And so it's not, not overbearing in our lives. I, mean, I think we're all kind of yearning to do it when it's time to do it. And so it, it hasn't become a drag. Um, so I think that's, that's really what's helped our longevity in the, in, in the end is our ability to kind of not have it rule our schedules or, or rule our lives and kind of uh, be able to be able to do it when it makes sense for us. Yeah. And that's what I get from a lot of bands and, and especially in a few recent interviews is just that, you know, it it feels like there comes a point in every band's career, especially when that is their full time main thing, where it ceases to be something that you want to do and something that you just have to keep going because if you don't yeah. then you can't pay the bills. And that's that's just not a fun place to be in, and I can understand that. But yeah, and that's a nice thing that you guys do have going is y'all all have other avenues of income, but you're still able to to put some time towards this as you need to, and then still put out quality records and and maintain a fan base even if you're not on the road 300 days out of the year, which is yeah, quite absolutely quite rare. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, I think that probably wraps things up. Unless there's anything else you want to throw out about the record that we haven't touched on, I most definitely don't want to leave anything on the table if there's something that you want people to know. No, man, that, I think that kind of covers it. Just thanks to everyone who supported the record. You know, we we did this pledge music thing um, way ahead of schedule, and so it was just sweet to see people kind of jump on that as soon as we launched it and kind of follow it all the way through to the release. So it's been kind of a long road getting that pre-sale out and, and two people and so i'm just stoked that it's now in everyone's hands and or almost in everyone's hands if people are waiting on shipment but um yeah it just feels good to have it finally be out there and get feedback and just thanks to everyone that supported it absolutely man 